Welcome back, students of fitness, to another episode of the Liftology Podcast. Rich and Joe back with you again today. And today's topic I thought we could go over is macronutrients and how to implement them in your nutrition plans. Those macronutrients being? So the macronutrients are protein, carbs, and fat. Um, they're building blocks for human life. Uh, you know, sustaining life. In sports nutrition, we kind of use them more in terms of energy production. Um, but, you know, that's just uh, still the same thing. Okay. Uh, well, first, I think we should uh, cover the, uh, the acceptable macronutrient distribution ranges, right? Which uh, AMDR for short, and kind of uh, give a few uh, sources for them. And then uh, also go over what each individually is. Yeah. And uh, got the ranges yeah, up so in that noggin there, Joe? Yeah, them. So <laughs> um, for generally accepted AMDR, we have uh, 45 to 65% for carbohydrates. That's percent of your total daily caloric intake. Okay. 20 to 35% of your d- daily caloric intake coming from fat and 10 to 35% coming from protein. <laughs> uh, those are some ranges. Well, yeah. uh, first, I think uh, in order to, to the way you tackle them to figure out which ranges you should go with, uh, I think the best way to go about it is to start with proteins first. Figure out how much protein you need in your diet, right? Regardless yep. of the source, figure out what kind of protein you need in your diet. Then from there, move on to the, the essential fats that you need in your diet, right? And then you close out with the carbohydrates, all that. Yes. Yeah, so... Carbohydrates is kind of like the remainder. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not an insignificant remainder. No. Yeah. But, but it is it, like the, the most important part is to get those uh, proteins and fats in. Yes. Right? Yeah. And uh, because protein is, uh, as we'll go over, very important in uh, whether it's putting on muscle while you're working out. Right. Yep. Or protecting lean muscle while losing fat. Yes. Right. So, um, that being said, uh, how would you go about calculating the uh, protein that you would need in your daily nutritional? So I think first we should start talking about um, how, we, how we discuss protein, right? And basically how we discuss protein is in a form of a ratio. And that ratio is typically grams of protein to kilograms of body weight. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, or pounds for us Americans. Yes, or pounds. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's funny because like, all the literature you read, everything is kilograms. Yeah, everything. No, I mean, and then you're sitting there it, with a the calculator it, yeah. like, how much do I need? So, it, it, yeah. Um, so uh, quick conversions, right? You would go over the bare minimum for the uh, average sedentary person is about uh, 0.8 grams, right? Yep. Per uh, kilogram of body weight or uh, 0.3 grams per pound. Yes. Right? And that is, like you said, minimum to su- for sustainability. Yeah. It's not a good, it's not really a good starting point. Mm-hmm. Um, but understand that you need to be getting that little bit amount of protein just to sustain life. And then we have athletes, right? And uh, you have a uh, little insight on the ranges. So of what you would give like someone not not just athletes but you know people regularly train. Yeah, I think people who train people who just want to be healthy in, in general. I think um, a good a better starting point is one point six grams per kilogram of body weight, um, which is point seven three grams per pound. Point seven three. Pretty sure that's right. Okay. Um, and the I know the higher ends. I don't. Uh, I don't know what the the offhand the kilograms is. Yeah, but I know it's um a one gram per pound, which I think translates to two point two kilogram. Yes. So two point uh so one gram for two point two kilograms of weight. Yes, and and that's the higher end of the of the spectrum. It's also the easiest to convert, right? <laughs> so yeah, you know I think you know it's it's not a it's not bad to be at that that point right if it's easier for conversion then that's fine you don't really need to go far above that um unless we're talking uh elite lifting 
uh, lead athletes, um, you know, training specifically for com- a competition. Um, for the regular, you know, go getter at the gym, two point two is is perfect. Great place to be. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think um, what you could do uh, actually is uh, you could either do the one to one conversion, or because like the point seven three on the low end is so uh so close to being three quarters just multiply your body weight by 0.75 yeah i mean that's an easy just like yeah like not not conversion calculator yeah I'm just you'll be nice and close to that that low end um of that range which works um with that all being said obviously you have to find what works for you so uh if you're finding 2.2 is too much 1.6 is not enough and you got to figure out, okay, well, what's 1.9 grams? Then, you know, you do the conversion. Oh, yeah, no, the ranges. Yeah. Um, and, like, ultimately we could uh, say what the ranges are, but uh, we can't speak specifically for everyone's diet. Like, yeah. it's, like, up to you to kind of figure out the ranges that works best for you. Anything in the ranges is going to be fine. Yeah, definitely. But, like, as far as optimal, that's something you kind of going to have to figure out yourself. Yeah. And uh, kind of piggybacking off of optimal, right? Uh, Brad, Doctor Doctor Brad Schoenfeld uh, had a research article talking about how much protein you should have optimally in each meal. Yeah, which is which is uh, basically that whatever your protein is over four meals. Yeah. So on the on the one point six end, it would be point four grams, right? Per uh, meal. Per meal. Yeah. Per. Oh, hold on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of numbers being thrown. Point six grams per kilogram of body weight per meal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so evenly distributed over four. Yeah. The best way for the protein absorption in the body, I guess, it would, it would be. Yeah. It. It. The study just kind of showed that, um, spacing your protein intake out over four meals showed the most benefit not saying that you don't get benefit from taking all that protein in three meals or even two um it's just the most is in four i mean that's just us going over what's optimal yeah like that's in a vacuum all this stuff and it's funny because when when i initially brought this to your attention and i was explaining the kind of how you just explained it with the you know point four Point six grams per kilogram body weight per meal and you were like or you could just take the total and divide it by four and i was like yeah you could do that too that, that works just as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean i mean like when you talk about like nutrition plans and diets and um you know, workout plans everything right when you're trying to better yourself because like, everybody has their own lives their own stressors their own obstacles they need to overcome uh you don't need to be doing math equations just to figure out the best way to do things. Yeah. So just kind of making it uh, a little easier to digest. Digesting protein. <laughs> uh, is the best way to kind of keep the adherence program. Yeah. And adherence is a great word to use there because... It, I about it today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if it starts to get overly complicated, that's the first like red flag that like you're not going to stick to it right yeah, like, so don't overcomplicate it you know keep it as as yes yes keep it simple stupid right it's the <laughs> easiest it, whatever's going to get you to keep on the plan do that yeah right but even with that knowing like how much protein to take in optimally for each meal uh the best way to kind of uh keep your lean muscle while losing weight if in 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 a in a fat loss uh, setting right yep would be uh having the, that the high protein is the most important part correct right? because yes. um, if you have like a high protein uh with a low carb diet or a high protein with a normal whatever yeah, quote like, unquote normal yeah, yeah um the the carbohydrate ratio wasn't the important part yeah, it's, it's it's like uh, the pr- the higher being where you have to be on the protein spectrum was more important than the carbohydrate number, which is why we're gonna cover 
the carbohydrates as the quote unquote filler of yeah the programs so yeah there was an actual study done um and uh we'll we'll have all the links to uh, our sources in the in the summary below but there was a study done that actually compared um for specifically for weight loss um high fat, protein, loss. fat loss yes thank you um that compared high protein diet um versus a normal again quote unquote normal protein diet um paired with either um low carb or normal carbohydrate diet and um they found that the high protein diet irrespective of the carbohydrates performed better than the normal protein diets who's using the big words yeah there you go so yeah but um, it, the it, over here. it it definitely goes to show though that like we place protein as first priority for a reason, right? Like it's mm-hmm. the it's the miracle macro, right? It's it's what's gonna assist in weight loss, fat loss. It's gonna what's it's what's gonna assist in muscle building, muscle maintenance. Um, so it's you know we we go over it first for a reason, and right? it's the most important. Well, I mean, it also, like, the reason why it increases, like, fat loss, right, is because, um, uh, uh, what's it, peptide YY? Peptide YY, yep. Right, and, um, the, uh, hunger fighting hormone, right, yep. uh, is increased. Yep. With a higher protein diet, and, uh, ghrelin, which is the uh hormone that like causes hunger the hunger hormone so it's like the hunger fighting hormone and then the the hunger uh, hormone yeah <laughs> but uh that's decreased on high protein diet right? yeah yeah and um yeah so those that's another added bonus another but and like um i know you you want to talk about this is um one of the big things you get from protein is all the uh nine essential amino acids yes yes that you need so if you want to yeah, I know that's one of your things that you want to cover. So, so I I, I just to I just else. want to touch real quick on on the um, hormone balance that that you just kind of said, how it uh, you know increases the peptide YY and decreases the ghrelin. Um, it's not just um, from meal to meal; it's also like within the meal that you're eating. So it is actually recommended that when you sit down to eat, actually. Try eating your protein first. Um, my vegetables. No, who needs vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Everyone. Everybody needs vegetables. <laughs> um, but it, it has been shown that if you actually eat the protein first, um, those um, those changes in your hormone levels start immediately. So it'll oh, actually, actually know that. it'll actually cool. reduce how much you're eating in a single sitting. Uh, again, if your goal is primarily i mean especially if you have a big steak right yeah yeah <laughs> but, i mean but we'll, listen we'll, we'll um we'll actually cover some uh some uh red meat a little bit later right with when we go over some, some fat because red meat most, most red, red meat has some fat in it yeah so i just want to like, check my notes here real quick like, uh, I like me a steak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, with all the, the stuff we were saying with the high protein diets, another another additional thing is uh, higher protein diets while you're in a caloric deficit uh, helps you maintain. I think it's something like um, up to three pounds of lean muscle mass over uh, being in a caloric deficit. I mean, you'll, you'll be losing the weight because the caloric deficit is what. Yep. But you will actually not maintain the same amount like, of lean muscle it's like losing the right kind of weight yeah yeah which is that's i mean again you know i I half jokingly called it like the miracle macro but i mean it really does do incredible things for you um so um, that's good and to to touch on like what you know what makes up a protein right and it, you know it's a chain of amino acids um so body needs uh 20 different amino acids mm-hmm. um 11 which we produce you can produce 11 as needed um there are nine what they call nine essential amino acids essential meaning you have to get them through your diet um with that being said uh you'll see a lot of promotion for supplementing amino acids 
I will notice though too that I think kind of like for the supplementation market, um, it used to be marketed as branch chain amino acids. Yeah. Which, you know, like you were just saying, protein is essentially a branch chain yes. of amino acids. But they kind of, as is with everything in the industry, not everything, but like when you see people try to overly monetize things, um, they took the phrase essential and put it into, like, because I've seen branch chain amino uh, acids or BCAAs being marketed yeah. now. Same companies now marketing it as Essential, essential amino acids because that that word carries a lot of a lot of power right word word yeah yeah but now with that being said though understand that if you're on a an already protein focused diet for all the reasons that we explained for you know correct correct type of weight loss to build lean muscle to maintain uh, muscle that you currently have you're already getting plenty of the essential amino acids uh in all meat products and you know chicken fish beef lamb whatever they all are complete proteins beyond burgers uh, i've never had one <laughs> no i'm just saying that because um I'll, I'll 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 just make this point real quick and we'll get back to yeah. that is that there are sources for bo- for uh for plant-based diets it's not just meats that you could get all these essentially meats. yes uh, that... but, but 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 that specifically there are a few uh, proteins that you have to have to reach those because some plant-based sources won't have you Correct. reaching that so typically all like i said all meat sources are complete proteins meaning all meat sources have all nine essential amino acids mm-hmm. um in like a vegan diet typically you need to to combine um plant protein with proteins from grains mm-hmm. and that's how you get your your nine, com- essential. Your nine essential amino acids which is which is completely doable, and you know what? Like, more power to anybody who, uh, whether it's by choice or not by choice, that you have to kind of stick to a plant based diet. It's a lot more work to be done with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and then just you know, going back to the idea of supplementing them at that point, there's it's just excess. Uh, your body has no way of storing excess amino acids, so. There's no amino acid bank? No. Just goats. So, I'm know, sorry. I'm sorry. Basically, like, one of three things happens. Um, the, the excess amino acids get converted into glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis um, or keto- uh, through a process called ketosis. It uh, gets converted into ketone bodies. Which breath will not be spilling not particularly like a, well. If no, any of you yet. out there have been on any kind of keto diets before and noticed that they smell, what do they smell like, Joe? Ammonia. Yeah. Not great. Yeah. Um, or lastly, they uh, get broken down and you excrete them, right? You just eat them out. Oh. So you pee. Pee smells buying like expensive, <laughs> Buying expensive urine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, again, Diet first. If you're eating a well balanced diet, don't worry about all the supplementation. You really don't. You know, focus on your diet, and then if there's something you, you feel like you personally need to make up for, then you can start supplementing. Don't do it in that in the reverse order where it's like, well, what supplements do I need, and then try to make a diet plan. Yeah, no, I mean, let's put in the cart in front of the horse. Yeah. Make the diet plan first. And usually, if you have a a well structured nutritional, plan. I want I want to say nutritional. I want to say diet. I want nutritional plan. Yeah. Because um, diet uh kind of infers that like after you get to a certain point is over. Nutritional plan kind of uh infers that this is how you're going to. I mean, obviously, yes. people go to parties, people whatever. I, I get. But it's just like what you're sticking to the majority. I get of the that. Time. I I really do. I just I I think we need to start getting rid of that stigma against the word diet, right? Diet doesn't have to mean you're on a diet. It is your diet, what you're eating. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying for the, for the population out there that, you know, associates diet with, you know, Cal- stop eating. Deficit. Yeah. But when I say diet, just to clear the, clear the air here, when I say diet, I mean your nutrition plan, what you're taking in. They are synonyms, Okay. you know? Um, I don't know. 
well, I mean, it's obvious why the word diet kind of ended up being um, having that that association that it has now. Okay. Um, and it's because you know everybody started throwing it around, right? The beach body diet, the, the keto South diet, diet, South Beach diet, the you know everything is like Atkins diet, right? Everything is well, yeah, because instead of like focusing on what your um your nutrition plan is. It actually is, uh, it's marketing on like losing weight. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, I mean, yeah. Once it got, gets marketed as diet means losing weight, everybody's like, oh, well, diet means I'm eating less to lose weight. Doesn't technically mean that, but now that's just how it's associated. Yeah. So, so before we give some, um, some sources that you could get the proteins from, other ways that it is helpful is like helps with tissues. Uh, we did discuss a little bit of the hormone systems in the body yep. with the ghrelin and the peptide YY. Um, helps metabolically, right? Mm-hmm. Keep, keep your metabol- meta- metabolism. Your metabolism. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> and then uh, transport systems like hemoglobin is a big uh, byproduct yep. of making sure you have enough protein in your diet. Yep. That um, being said. As far so- as sources go. Um, you did mention earlier, you know, it doesn't have to be a meat product, but generally, as you know, all complete proteins are from meats. So that's any kind of meat, fish, chicken, beef, lamb, eggs, eggs, um, meats, anything dairy, (laughs) anything dairy is also, um, a complete protein. Uh Um, so also, um, I was taught like, uh, uh, years ago, a really easy way to think about it as far as. When we when we start talking about fats, um, the fewer legs of what you're eating has, mm-hmm. the leaner and healthier, quote unquote, healthier it so is. So you would go, uh, the best being fish, fish, right? Salmon, salmon. Uh, I'll use salmon to jump into the next. Yeah. Macro. Yep. But salmon, chicken or turkey. Yep. And then uh, cows, pigs. Cows, pigs, yep. Absolutely. Uh, like Can't I, forget the other white meat. Uh, you almost had me going into an Austin Powers <laughs> joke right there. Um, but like I said, I'm going to use this, the, the salmon to springboard into our next macronutrient, which is because it is also a good source of fat. Yes. Salmon is a good source of fat as well as proteins. But um, why don't you start us off on... Yeah, so on fats and uh, the direction you want to kind of take us in. So as we uh, mentioned earlier, um, with the AMDR, fats should be about twenty to thirty-five percent of your uh, daily caloric intake, um, which equates to less. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna get just throw stupid fact out there real quick. Yep. Um, proteins and carbohydrates. Uh, for every uh, gram of each. Yep is four calories correct oh yes and then for fat every gram of fat is nine calories yes so even though the percentages seem high they're more calorically dense yes so therefore you actually need um fewer grams to get a the same amount of calories yeah exactly um yeah so you know don't let that 20 like oh should i be eating you know 30 percent of my diet is fat if you break it down into calories and grams it's it's not as much as you think um, because of the fact that they are more calorically dense. Um, also, because they're more calorically dense, they actually help you stay fuller longer. Um, hey, way to spread yeah. that. So it's actually, um, you know, again, you know, there, there's a reason we do this. Uh, we're doing this specifically in the order that we're doing it. Protein, you know, good for sati- satiation, keeping you fuller longer. Fat, also good for keeping you fuller longer. Um, the other thing about fats is when combined in a carbohydrate meal um it actually slows the rise of blood sugar post meal so no big spikes or crashes correct anybody who's had really shitty lunches at office jobs will tell you once they get back after lunch it's yeah that that two o'clock doze off right Mm -hmm. yep um energy drinks are not not the way to get back into it no definitely not (laughs) but um let's see if so, but fats are actually different. I, I was, no, uh, no, go, yeah. Trying, yeah. To, 
trying to collect my own thoughts here. Fire away. Uh, fats are actually different than proteins because there are different types of. Fat. I mean, there's different sources of protein, but there's different different types, types of, of fat. fat. Yeah, and uh, one of them being saturated fats, right? Yep. Which saturated fats are I mean, a little chemistry is they are the carbons are covered completely by hydrogen, right? And yep. that's kind of what makes them saturated. They're completely covered, right? Yes. And um, easy way to remember what's a saturated fat. Oh, easy way to remember would be um, if it's solid at room temperature. Yeah. So like your tropical oils, right? Yeah. Your uh, coconut, coconut palm, palm oil. oils, right? And uh, because that, because of that, they are not good for cholesterol, right? Yeah. And uh, kind of not good for your arteries, yeah. right? Because if they're if they're solid at room temperature, bloodstream's pretty much room temperature. Yeah. So they're going to clog up everything in there. Yeah. And also, um, you know, we were talking earlier about all the animal products. And typically all the fat you see on on a steak, on, you know, chicken skin. That's what I was saying with that, the steak before. Yeah, that's yeah. all, you know, saturated fat. Um, the real mean part about that is that fat on the steak is what gives it that flavor. Best part, isn't it? Because, um, I mean, I, I'm just to kind of... Bacon. <laughs> just to kind of diverge a little bit right now but like take a like a like a porterhouse right that 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 a fat right yeah and you take a flank flank steaks are better for your diets yeah they are tough as shit yeah <laughs> although th- so there's so there's some ways around that uh, of course now you're talking about you know um dollar wise it's not the smartest way to go about it but like something like a filet mignon is actually doesn't have a lot of intramuscular fat mm-hmm. it's just a super tender cut of meat yeah so you actually get that tenderness um but you'll notice uh, and i don't know, maybe this is a personal preference but like um the filet mignons tend to not have as much of a, a beef flavor right they're very it's a very delicate very soft cut of meat um so i feel like you you kind of compromise the flavor to get that tenderness, whereas you take something like um, like a New York strip steak or even a ribeye that has that like thick, you know, rim of fat on it. Marble. Yeah, and all the marbling in between, and um, I mean, they're just packed with flavor. You know, yeah. I mean, if you want to get into like when you're cooking, all right, try to get some things in a marinade. That's why marinades exist, right? To yeah. break down that tougher. Yep. Right, so that like you can get the cheaper cuts of meat i hate saying cheaper cuts of meat because they're actually better for you yeah if you could if you could yeah get through the toughness yeah but you're right i mean that's you know and that's all part of like you know when when you think about like meal prepping um you know you want to for you know dollar wise they're they're better value right they're healthier because lower in saturated fat um you know the only caveat is you probably want to marinate them a little, right? Yeah. So that they, they tenderize and you get a little more flavor out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind when you're doing your meal prep. After, okay. So now with that being said, right, uh, I think our little yeah divergence into how we like our steaks, uh, I think it's important to Medium go rare. over. <laughs> There's no other way to eat steak. No. <laughs> I, I, I agree, but. Uh, but real but quick, cor- staying on saturated fat. Yeah. There's a, um, you know, we talked about that range of um, 20 to 35%, mm-hmm. but there is actually an, uh, an upper limit towards how much of that should actually be saturated fat. Yeah, that's what, that's, yeah. you read my mind. There you go. Uh, which that, uh, the American Heart Association, right, recommends that it's like 5 to, five to 6% yeah. of your uh, daily intake, yeah. which equates to 13 grams. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, read it's a lot, but it's not. For, I mean, 13 grams, I'm sorry, for a 2,000 calorie diet. Yes, because it is based off of Percentages. percentage. But, you know, I have read as high as 10. Um, but, yeah, to be on the safer side, uh, stay in that, you know, 5 to 7 range. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, if you're lower, like, if you're t- at 10, but you're not eating red meat on a regular basis. Like, yeah. yeah this, the, 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 there are multiple things to take into account. Yeah. Like... 
these these uh percentages exist as a as a guideline type Correct. thing like um obviously if you're eating red meat at every single meal yeah that's not good not good but like if you have you know we're humans too we gotta like we, we splurge a little here we splurge it's everything's on average right? yeah and it's just making sure that you're kind of keeping that low on a regular basis. yep all right so um i think that covers saturated right? yeah so, uh, i would just add one one last thing is um you know you've heard with like vegetables they say you know try to eat a rainbow of vegetables to get yeah. like all the different vitamins and minerals they have to offer it's kind of the same with like eating a protein right you don't want to stick to the same protein every single time it is good to get a variety chicken breast brown rice and broccoli baby and i think that's uh <laughs> yeah, body bodybuilding 101 the best meal there is i mean the funny thing is you like, you could rip that all you want it's easy for those the, the reason why they do bodybuilders do that is because you don't have to think convenience yeah it's just like like we said like you don't want to i don't want to say gate but like but essentially gatekeep like your diets because you have to do math every day yeah. so like if, if you like again keeping keeping with it by keeping it simple yeah right? anyway uh going back to next uh type of fat would be unsaturated fat right yep unsaturated fats uh mono and this polyunsaturated fats right yep uh both of them have less uh hydrogen atoms right? yeah mono meaning minus one hydrogen atom poly meaning minus multiple yeah okay yep <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I was just kind of going over it and yep. how, how you, a way you can tell which ones those are is if they're liquid at room temperature unlike the yes. saturated fats are solid at room temperature and some sources of those would be like all the other types of oils, right? Aside from the palms and the tropicals that were, palm would be tropical, but like the coconut, the palms, yep. like all those things. Um, and then there's the fish, right? Or the yep. this this, uh, this uh, topic, right? Yeah. Uh, and then there's you even get them from fish, from nuts, like yeah. avocados. Yeah. And when when you say fish, you know, just delineate because we mentioned like. Salmon happens to be a fatty fish with visible fat on it. Mm -hmm. um, you're specifically talking about the fish oil, right? The oil that comes from the yes, fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I yeah. should have clarified that. But um, do you have anything else you want to say? Anyth anything you want to go over with unsaturated fat? Sure. Um, no, I, I think we kind of, you know, I, I, I just so, like the... Um, that would be the remainder of the 20 to 35, right? Yeah. And uh, ideally, now I will say that um, you'll see in you know, they'll say like, well, polyunsaturated more healthy than monounsaturated, more healthy than saturated. But once you're already in that that unsaturated realm, mono or poly, they're they're, they're better, they're, they're both just, they're, they're just, just better. better, and they're they're close, not not significant enough difference to worry about which one's Whereas mono and which one's a poly. Significant difference between. Saturated. unsaturated and saturated yeah yeah and that brings us to the man-made uh fat right trans fats the enemy everyone's heard of it right uh products are now saying that they don't have trans fats like you know branding that they don't have trans fats in their process right which yeah. are a um it's like an industrialized process we we add the hydrogens to to uh to the fats kind of the, make them worse yeah and it's to you know preserve shelf life of, of foods and um add flavor um extra right extra um i'd be curious to like just try a trans fat to be like what flavor are they refer is it like just an enhanced flavor of what you're eating or does it carry its own flavor I got nothing. No, no, uh, right? Yeah, but like I know, that's like rare. I, you, yeah. I usually have something. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's, I guess, I guess they kind of just play into the fats. Typically, add flavors to things. Yeah. So adding fat adds flavor. Yes. <laughs> like it's like scrambling eggs. 
plain or scrambling eggs with butter? Which one tastes better? <laughs> butter being solid at room temperature. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to limit that butter intake. You do. That you being do. said, that's actually a good segue here. Because that being said, butter is still a better alternative than what everyone used to think was better than butter. Coconut oil. I was going to say margarine. Oh, margarine. Yeah. Because it's trans fat. Margarine. margarine is a trans fat. Right? I never even thought of it like that. Oh. Yeah. This, this man made stuff. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> no, but also with that being said, it kind of uh, lowers your good your good cholesterol too. Trans fats, like your HDL yeah. lowers that. And um it's just I mean, we don't have to get into like the weeds here. It's just not good. Yeah. You shouldn't you shouldn't have use it sparingly, right? Like yeah. if you look at old school uh, food pyramids where they have like sparingly. Yeah. I mean, and trans fats is like yeah. one of the things that, like, I would almost say, like, if you can try to avoid it. Really, oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I would say try to avoid it. But, you know, if you want to spur like, it on a say, cookie here and do, there. Yeah. You know, people do, like, I'm not going to say don't live. But yeah. Just don't overlive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't go what, for a sleeve of Oreos, I guess. I don't know. That's um, one way to put it. Some examples that have trans fats are because, like you said, preserving products right so like frozen pizza uh french fries you know just things that have what you would consider uh an unnatural yeah. shelf life when you're like why has that not withered away yeah, yeah like those things generally stay away from them yeah if you yeah if you're shopping for anything and you look at the best buy date and it's you know a year and a half from now and it's not in a can e something up with that right um yeah. Real quick, you did say um, it lowers your HDL, mm-hmm. right? And just to touch really quickly on, uh, so HDL stands for high density lipoprotein, mm-hmm. right? There's there's three types of uh, metrics for figuring out um, your total cholesterol. It's your HDL, your LDL, your low density lipoproteins, and triglycerides, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we call HDL the the good cholesterol. Um, and LDL is, you know, the one you, you want to keep down. I'm, don't quote me on this and I will double check. Um, but I think you want like a six to one HDL to LDL ratio. I will, I will go out there with you and say, I think that's right. Yeah. But, uh, I'll try to see if I can find it and if I can yeah put it up on the screen Yeah. here maybe. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> um, and, uh. Yeah, so with that being said, um, you know, on a, one of the big concerns of like a high protein, uh, high fat diet is like, oh, what well, should I be concerned about my cholesterol? Um, if you're eating the right kinds of proteins, um, reducing, uh, not reducing, making sure you're staying in that healthy range of saturated fats versus unsaturated fats, um, you know, the your cholesterol most likely won't uh be too high right and even if it is on the high end you're gonna see that good to bad cholesterol ratio being a healthier ratio so you know there's that arbitrary number of keep your cholesterol you know below 200 Mm -hmm. um if you're hovering around 200 but you have that good cholesterol to bad cholesterol ratio you're you're still in a good spot okay all right just want to you know, touch on that real quick because I know we threw HDL out there like everybody knows what that is. Yeah, but. no, that's you know what I know uh, when we're doing this show and when we talk in general. Yeah, kind of everything has an acronym. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, everything has an acronym, and you kind of forget that like um all all of these acronyms aren't readily known by everyone. So like we when we talk about this, we kind of know what we're talking about so like uh i like that when you say something that might not be readily known or i say something that might not be readily known we kind of just bring it back so you guys can kind of yeah understand what we're trying to say but you know that being said uh generally speaking fats are necessary in your diets yes they're not the enemy you know they're needed for uh absorption of uh, fat soluble vitamins a D E K. A D E K. Four fat soluble vitamins. Yep. 
I just want to get that out there again. <laughs> <laughs> um, essential fatty acids, uh, they help insulate your organs and, uh, you know, great source of energy. Yeah, I, that comes back to the fact that they are calorically dense, right? And we talked about having, you know, when you think of a calorie, calorie calories really are um, energy, right? Mm-hmm. So getting nine calories per gram means it's a better source of energy than... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, to get a little scientific here, right? Calorie is uh, the amount of heat needed to, like... Raise a... A milliliter of water, one degree, something. I don't know. I, I I just started talking because I remembered that calories are like it's a, it's kilo a, calories. It's the amount of heat needed to to dissipate something. Yeah, and that's 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 why um calories are interchangeably used with energy because it's uh, yeah yeah. And we you were you know you had mentioned earlier about being in a caloric deficit that. Being in a caloric deficit means you're using more energy than you're ingesting, so your body starts drawing off of fat stores for energy, and that's why being in a caloric deficit leads to weight loss, fat loss. Uh, weight loss first. Weight loss first. But if your if your protein is on point, like we were saying yeah. earlier, that's why we started with protein. Yep. That it will be fat loss more than just anything. Because yes. if you don't have enough protein, they'll start drawing. Some of that weight from yeah and again it actually does kind of circle back to why lower carbohydrate diets work because if you don't have uh high glucose stores again because you, you, your body's going to go to glucose first for yeah, energy because glucose is the most readily, readily available. available yeah um so but once that's depleted that's when you start to burn through um stored body fat right so yeah. Um, so, you know, low carb diets do work. Um, but with that being said, you still need to get carbohydrates. Um, shift gears yeah. now and head right back in, head yeah. back into, uh, carbohydrates then because you're talking about glucose, right? Uh, sh- it, it, carbs can break down into three categories, right? Yeah. And, uh, I'm jumping ahead by going straight into the sugar cause you're talking about glucose. Yeah. Sugar is glucose, right? Yep. There's glucose glucose is sugar. Rectangles are square, square, yeah. rectangles. That, that type of thing. Um, simple car are the simplest of carbs, and they provide the quick energy, like you were just saying. But um, one detriment of that is it raises blood sugar very quickly, and then it depletes it very quickly. Yeah, which is why that's that crash. Um, that back to that uh, two o'clock crash that we were talking about, yeah. right? Because typically lunches from office jobs. Most people are going out and having a good time, you know, with their work friends, do whatever. Yeah. And uh, you're not really on point knowing what you're taking in. So when that happens, unfortunately, uh, it's not productive for keeping your blood sugar levels where they should be. And that's when you get the crashes. Yeah, you get the spike followed by the crash. Um, and uh, one, one real quick thing about um, sugars is, you know, just be careful when you're reading food labels. Um, because a lot of times they will try to disguise sugar, right? Um, you'll see, um, sugar with like, uh, glasses and a mustache. All right. Yeah, thing. exactly. <laughs> like uh, on the ingredients label, it'll, you know, it'll label, you know, corn syrup or fructose or sucrose or molasses or, you know, agave nectar and it's, or honey. Agave nectar. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like, oh, see, it doesn't have sugar. It has, it has honey. Honey is, is sugar. Molasses is sugar. These are all, yeah. and uh, another quick takeaway, anything that ends in O-S-E, sugar. Fructose, glucose. Galactose. Fructose. Who's the Galactose enemy? isn't even Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the enemy in Fantastic Four? Galactose. <laughs> I would love to see some stupid, like, little su- nerdy scientific thing with, oh, no, it's Galactose, <laughs> and it's just... Uh, we can make that meme, Rich. We can make that happen. Oh, uh, uh, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No, um, so, he, actually, here's a question that I, I, I actually don't know, and maybe you can help me out here if you do know or not, because you were talking about molasses and avian nectar and all that. Um, 
if that is in the product, it'll still show up on the nutrition label as sugar, though, right? Yes. Okay. I, yes. I want to say, like, if it, if you read the nutrition label and it says sugars zero grams, and you go to ingredients, you won't see you any should, of those. No. If, if you do, then it's a blatant lie. Well, if you... <laughs> it might be a lawsuit if it's <laughs> yeah. zero sugars, and then you could say it says sugars yeah. right here. Yeah. No. Um. So you know, sugars quick hit. You know, sugars. I wouldn't say are necessarily in diets per se. Like. Yeah. From those sources, those simple sugars, right? Yeah. They're... Because uh, you kind of, I would say, you kind of want more complex. I mean, if you're if you're playing sports and you need a quick hit to kind of like. Yeah. I mean, situationally. Yes. I don't want to say I don't want to say never for that, everything. That's a great way of putting it situationally, well, yeah. because they are typically the kind of carbohydrate you don't want to be getting a lot of. Yeah, because you you because the carbohydrate you do want to be getting a lot of are starches. Yes, which are much more complex than sugars, and um, the slower rise in that blood sugar level and post kind of meal. maintains it over yeah. a longer period of time. Yeah. Right? where you have that energy, you don't have a spike, you don't have a dip. Yeah, and it just it's it's so like you that... combine that with uh the satiation from proteins and fats. That's why that's why well balanced diets work. It's it's amazing. If you're isn't believe, it? <laughs> you believe that you, we you kind of talk we kind of talk you through how they yeah that and that's why we said in the beginning to take it in these steps. Yeah. Right? So, um some good sources of some complex carbohydrates, right? Some starches or starches or complex carbs. Yeah. You want to go about it are like beans, legumes, uh, whole grains, even fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Because fruits and vegetables also have fiber, which is other fibers, like almost like a, like a subcategory of complex carbohydrates. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so the main difference between, you know, the reason we separate fiber into its own category is because it's completely insoluble, right? You can't break down fiber. Um, passes through whole. Um, it is, um, it's great for... It's, it's great for you, but it's kind of funny when you think, just like, like when you start to think about it, you're like, oh, we don't absorb this, yeah. but it's good for us? Good for you. Why is it good for you? Well, because it helps, like, well, some of the insoluble fiber actually scrapes your like intestines. No, yeah, kind of... let's get gross with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but but you know, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, helps keep. I don't want to say unfortunately, like that is the reality of why you're doing yeah. these diets, right? Um, with that being said, um, it actually um, one thing that loves to cling to fiber on its way out, mm -hmm. uh, low density lipoproteins, LDLs. Uh, the fiber can actually reduce the bad cholesterol. It's all coming <laughs> together. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, we covered but proteins, fats, oh, overview of carbohydrates. Uh, I think a uh, a good direction to go now, right, would be to kind of go over a typical, just a, just a real quick, simple plan. Yeah. So, so without specifics on you know what to eat right because that's not what we're about right it's yeah, we're not we're, we're not worried about uh we're giving you the game specific plan. yeah uh specific protein specific like we're looking for you to reach certain numbers according to the ranges right uh we don't want to tell you tell you what to eat we'll give you some ideas yeah well that's what we gave the sources for. yeah and so when when you're thinking about setting up a macronutrient plan. The first thing you want to determine is the total amount of calories you're consuming in a day. Right? Now, to do that, there's a little bit of math involved. You want to figure out what your basal metabolic rate is. Uh, you want to multiply it by some factor that involves um, your uh, energy expenditure throughout the day. Are you sedentary? Are you moderately active? Are you very active? Are you working out once that, a week, twice a week, three times a week? That's why you'll see on a lot of these nutrition plans. Um, well, first of all, I think you should take body type. Throw it out the window. Yeah. Um, that's a common thing that's used as a... But uh, that's one of the typical questions they'll ask you on these questionnaires. Yeah. And then they'll ask you, you know, like, how much do you sleep? Or like... 
the, the, the main thing that we're getting to is how active you are because yeah. that's the most important part about figuring out what your nutritional yes because um so i say basal metabolic rate that's essentially the minimum calories needed for you to live, live. right yeah. for that day um that just involves processes that you don't even you're unaware of you know blinking burns calories breathing burns calories digestion burns calories <laughs> so you know it's you, you need you know x amount of protein uh x amount of calories per day just to do all those things mm -hmm. and then above and beyond that is the excess right yeah. and that's why uh if you want to know if you're at a caloric deficit knowing you're you know having that factor to multiply that bmr by um based on your level of activity is is a, a good starting point so but for all intents and purposes let's just assume a 2000 calorie diet okay all right i think that's because that's, you know, the daily recommended values, which is, again, super arbitrary. The, that whole 2,000-calorie diet is a, nonsense. A lot of but. the stuff in nutrition and exercise is based on, like, I guess you would say, like, a curve type stuff. Yeah. Like, the, the, your average person, a, a, good, a good starting point, not the be-all, end-all. Correct. Um, so, for the sake of the, the demo, let's assume a 2,000-calorie diet. Um, for a person who weighs a hundred pounds, again, just because a hundred is a nice, even number, and, uh, it'll be easier to figure out. So again, we talked about protein first. That's the first thing we want to figure out. So we're starting with the number 2000. Mm -hmm. We're going to figure out our body weight is a hundred. We're going to eat one gram per pound of body weight. So it's a hundred grams of protein. That's why we talked about on the higher end of things being one. Yes. And in this case, just so it's... Yeah. Easy to do the math. So now we have 100 grams of protein, mm -hmm. which would be multiplied by four to get 100 the calories. Calories. So now we know that we're going to eat 400 calories of protein um, every day. Mm -hmm. So we take the 2,000 minus the 400, we're left with 1,600 calories for the day. And if you go back to the spreading it out between four meals, that would be 100 calories grams, of 100 calories per, per meal. meal. Yep. Um, yeah, so then next we talked about fats. Um, so we gave that, that range, um, and when determining where on that range you want to be, it's kind of like goal oriented, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if you're looking to build muscle and, and, mm -hmm. you know, put on more size. You're going to want to be lower on it because you're going to want more energy from the carbohydrates, right? Lower on? On the fats. Um, lower end of the spectrum because... I would say higher on the fats because you want the calorically dense foods. Okay. Right? I, I, w I was going to go for en energy expenditure that you would need more complex carbohydrates to get through the day. Well, that's, I mean, that's why there are ranges. Yeah, but, you know, with that being said, if my goal is to, um, you know, if, if you're, it's a range, and the most important thing is it's what you can eat, right, what you can consume. So that's why the range is good, because if... You you know you know what your daily routine is. You know typically what you can eat, what you can ha what you have available to eat for breakfast, what your options are for lunch. You know I don't have time to to cook dinner every night, so you know these are my options. So allowing you to have that range, yeah, works for that. It builds into the plan, like builds, yeah. yeah. So like again, like we said, that's that's why we will fill out everything else with carbohydrates. Yeah, right. Because a absolutely, proteins are important are the most important then like based on like what you have readily available to you right because if you have a bunch of eggs for breakfast just right out of the gate you're going to have higher fat in your day. yeah because, i mean uh, eggs eggs not egg whites whole, whole eggs. eggs yeah um because also there are a lot of nutrients in the egg yolks but that's another yeah another story but uh as far as I mean, you get the full proteins, the fats, nutrients, oil. Yeah. So let's just, you know, for this example, we're down to 1,600 carbs, uh, 1,600 Cows. calories. We're going to 
just stay with 20% of our diet is going to come from fats because again, it's just an easier number. Um, so now it's not 20% of the remaining, it's 20% of the total, right? So it's yeah, 2000 so it's calories. Mm. Um, so that's 400 calories. Yeah. And because fat. like what I said before, the fats and you're saying the calorically dense, you're being nine calories per gram, right? So it's a lower gram It's 400 divided by nine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 400 divided by 9. Forty-five. Nope. No, it would be 30-something. All right. Uh, 9. Because 10 times... 27. Okay. You know what? Hold on. I have a calculator. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the answer right now. Uh, Good thing. Good thing we made it easier. Yeah. 400 divided by 9 is 44 grams. Or 4444. Four, 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 four. Yeah. So it's 44 grams of fat. Um, now, whereas, you know, so it's the same, right? So if we're getting 400, gram, uh, 400 calories from protein, but we need more grams of protein <laughs> i'm just you know what that like that math just made me, like we had 400 from protein mm -hmm. and we had 400 from fat yeah we didn't have to figure out how many grams of fat that is that's just 400 400 because you take those two no, yeah but we're trying then, to we're trying to oh, make a point that like it's well it's 44.4 grams that of fat. to get 400 grams uh 400 calories of protein need a hundred grams of protein and for a, for 400 100 grams, grams of fat, fat 400 calories of fat you only need 44 yeah. grams um yeah. that's where that calorically dense concept comes Correct. in and with that you you now have left over 1200 1200 calories which and not that carbs is like a throwaway but they make up the remainder of your yeah no diet. i mean look if if you need three things in a diet and you figure out two you don't have to figure out the third because it's whatever. It's, no, it's whatever. It's not that it's a, like you said, it's not like it's a throwaway. It's just that it's important to figure out two. Yeah. And then after you figure out two, you have the third. Yeah. And uh, again, with that, you know, 1200 calories um, coming from carbohydrates, you just want to make sure you're getting um, mostly complex carbohydrates, stuff high in fiber. Um, and that's how you get a, a well rounded macronutrient plan. Yeah. So, uh, Anyone that has any kind of questions about those, we can, like I said in previous episodes, feel free to leave a comment uh, or DM us on our Instagram account, which is the liftology, the underscore liftology. Uh, and I'll put, put it right up here if you want to check it out. And uh, make sure you take that nutritional plan that you're trying to implement. Take it to your workouts. Make sure that you're working out just as smart as you are hard.